Welcome back to week seven online Bible studies and first five friends. We're so excited to see you once again. My name is Kendra. This is Hannah. Hey, we're hosts together. We're taking you on this journey. We're guiding you guys along, and it's our pleasure to do so. You guys have been doing such a good job. Thank you, Joel. I just want to acknowledge that. Y'all have been killing it. Thank you. Yeah. You've done a great job with 60 Second Theology, with yeah. all your teachings as well. So, Yes, Joel, we're excited to have you back for another week. We get to learn from you. And so we just finished, well, we went through the Old Testament, we went through the Gospels, and now we find ourselves in the book of Acts going through the longing of identity. Mm. That's right, Kendra. Yeah, that sounds, that, mm, it's, there's, <laughs> there's a lot we can put our identity in. And so we can all identify by different things, whether it's our relationship status, our ethnicity, place of work, and there's just so, so much more that we can identify with. And so, Joel, you said in the intro this week, our identity is not simply about us. It is about our relationship with God who rewrites our story into his story. So let me ask you, in a world where we are often told what our identity should be, how do we fight for this? To remember to live in freedom in our relationship with the Lord. Yeah, that's such a good question. I think uh, one of the things that is maybe a lost art or a forgotten art is what I like to call a theology of remembrance. Mm -hmm. um, and so ultimately what this is, is a spiritual habit, a spiritual discipline of saying, I'm going to recollect and look back on all of God's past faithful, faithful actions, mm -hmm. realities, situations, and circumstances where he has come through. I'm going to remember them. I'm going to recollect them. I'm going to celebrate them. I'm going to praise God because of those truths. And as I'm doing this, as I am uh, participating in this theology of remembrance, it's actually forming my heart into being a type of person um, that adores and loves God. And so it gives me an instant confirmation uh, to trust God in my present situations and circumstances and to trust that he'll be faithful in the future. And all of this, it, we may be, you may be like, wait, Joel, you're talking about situations and circumstances circumstances, but in this, our person, who we are, is being shaped and formed. We're identifying that our identity is not rooted in what we do, but on what God has already done. And the more that we can go back to that and do that, um, the more important and the more helpful it is for us. Now, I, want, I know we're in the New Testament now, <laughs> But I always say that the Old Testament is like this fertile soil, right? And there's seeds that are planted in the soil and they grow up and they bear trees and they bear fruit. Well, in the New Testament, what we're talking about is the fertile ground of Deuteronomy chapter 6. I want to read just a couple of verses to you. This is Moses. This is called the Shema. And this is what uh, Moses says. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your might. Catch this. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. They shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And so we find rooted all the way back in the Old Testament, this reality that the Israelites were always intended to not just remember for themselves the past faithfulness of God, but to teach it to their loved ones and to their families and um, to all those that they came across. And when we do this, our identity is uh, forming around the identity of Christ. That's good, Joel. And something that I like to do to remember how God's faithfulness has played out in my own life is write journal entries or just do something to remember when I'm in those times where I'm like, is God going to come through? I can go back and look at how he's come through before and be reminded and continue on. So good, Kendra. One of the things I do in mind, if you look at my Bible right now, <laughs> I've got notes and how I actually put dates next to my notes and my highlights. And because it's, again, it's a chronological timestamp of good. what God's doing. That's so go. good. Yeah. It's practical, everyone. We yeah. like to be practical. Yeah. And so, Joel, I have a few questions for you because yeah. you may or may not know this, but Melissa Taylor, who is our senior director of First Five and Online Bible Studies, in a video prior to this, she became our quick coach. And what that means is she kind of encouraged our people to keep going and don't yeah. give up now. And so, I'm going to ask you to maybe take on the persona of a quick coach a little okay. bit. Yeah. And as we go through this identity, sometimes we can get criticism or pushback as we live for Christ. And yep. so 
What would you say to our people to continue on and fight the good fight? Um, there is a destination at the other end, mm -hmm. you know? Like, we're not moving towards something random. We're right. moving towards Jesus himself, this, this future um, of the new heavens and the new earth, and we want to be prepared. And so the goal that is in front of us uh, gives us every reason to fight forward and to not quit. That's good. Wow, look at that. I know. That's so good. Quick coach from Joel. Well, from <laughs> quick coach to 60 second theology. Um, you wear many hats. Yes. Oh, we're doing the 60 second now. Oh, it's happening now. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. We're not letting you do this one elsewhere. So, <laughs> friends, um, one of Kendra and my favorite parts. Joel, I hope this is your favorite part as well because yeah, it may be a little stressful, but yeah, we yeah. start sweating for you. We have good empathy. <laughs> um, but so, okay, our question is what is the difference? between the Jews, the Gentiles, and the Samaritans. Okay, very important. So um, the way that we think about ethnicity in the Old Testament, we have to kind of re-imagine uh, it, I guess, for us in the Western context. So for the Israelites, there is ethnic um, Jews, they're ethnic, uh, ethnically Jewish, but there is also a possibility that you could become Jewish by religion, you know? And so in the New Testament, this is referred to as the proselytes. You have actually been engrafted into the community of the, the Jewish community, essentially. And then the way that the language of the Old Testament is described, uh, anybody who is not an Israelite, anybody who's not Jewish is essentially a Gentile or a pagan or a foreigner. So it's all the other nations. Now, Samaritans are actually individuals, and this is a massive context in the New Testament, that are actually half Jew and half Gentile. They're essentially half breeds. That's what they were, they were described. And it was very difficult for them to fit in. And so the fact that Jesus goes into Samaria in John chapter four and meets a Samaritan woman and calls her to himself is an indication that there's no more Ooh. distinction. Oh! Yeah. No. <laughs> Sorry. 102. Um, but this also, is the first time. This is my favorite here. I've been waiting for this. No. Because this is also the one I'm most passionate about. Yeah. We can talk, we can talk more yeah. about it, but here's why it's my favorite. It's week seven. And you stopped me. I did. Seven is the number of perfection, and you just <laughs> didn't crush it. So, oh my gosh. I think it's humbling. I think it's humbling. Yeah. Humble yeah. Theology. But yeah. your identity is not in what you can do. It's in it's an identity of what yeah. Christ has already yeah. done. And the good news is Christ has already written all this in the Bible. So just read it. <laughs> That's good. So go and, and read, yeah, I guess, is yeah. what we get to take away yeah. from that. Am I allowed to finish? Yeah, no, no definitely finish for the people. Sure. For sure, yes. Jesus in John chapter 4, he does something. He he is forced. People at that time, they wouldn't even go through Samaria. They would go around it because if you came in contact with somebody who was not, I mean, you could become unclean. This is insane. Jesus intentionally goes through Samaria so he can meet the Samaritan woman. And the first, what I think we find is the very first ev uh, evangelist for Christianity, ultimately for this new family of God, is a Samaritan who's a woman who goes back into the same community that she was not um, loved or cared for in that community and she says, you need to come meet this guy who told me all that I've ever done. His name is Jesus. And so there you go. There it is, everyone. All right, great job. That was like a minute yeah. 30 second theology with Joel. That was good. You're not going to let me live this down, huh? No, 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 we're not. That was good. I was hoping I had one chance to say so close. All right, so in this week, in your study guide on page 150, you're going to see something that we actually want to do right here. We're going to repeat after Joel, but it's all about the identity in Christ and reminding ourselves who we are. And so if you would be so kind on the other side of your screen, go ahead and when Joel reads, repeat after him with Hannah and I. All right, here we go. Um, who are we? We are image bearers of God. We are image bearers of God. Whose are we? We belong wholly and fully to God the Father. We belong wholly and fully to God the Father. What are we supposed to do? We're to spread the glory of God to the ends of the earth. We are to spread the glory of God to the ends of the earth. By making disciples of Jesus. By making disciples of Jesus. Amongst all the nations. Amongst all the nations. Amen. That's Amen. so good. Well, friends, uh, you had a special treat for week seven where Joel did not get um, his 60 second theology, but we are still so proud of him. And we hope that you have loved that segment that we've done every week just to dig a little deeper. Um, but also we are just praying for you this week. We pray that you recognize that your identity is first and foremost as a son and a daughter of Christ. And that is the most important identity you can ever have. And so we love you guys, and what we do every single week is close it out with believing that God's word, which is the truth, that if you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. Bye, y'all.